Hi everyone, it's Christy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Euclidean algorithm. And this algorithm allows us to find the greatest common divisor between two integers. And the greatest common divisor is the largest integer that divides both numbers. I'm going to walk through an example that uses smaller numbers so you can see how the algorithm works. And then we will go through a problem that uses larger numbers and is a bit more challenging. Also, after I go through each of these examples, I will show you how to write the greatest common divisor as a linear combination of the two integers because sometimes you may be asked that question. All right, let's go ahead and try this first problem. So in this problem, I wanna find the greatest common divisor between the numbers 15 and 35. Now, some of you may look at this and know the greatest common divisor of 15 and 35 is five. So let me show you how we can use the Euclidean algorithm to find the number five as the greatest common divisor. What you do is you're going to start with the larger number, and you're gonna write that first. Then I want to set 35 equal to the smaller number times some number q, and then I will have a remainder. And I'm going to walk through this process until I get a remainder of zero. So we can write 35 as 15 times two, which gets us to 30, and then I would have a remainder of five. Because I did not get a remainder of zero, I do wanna repeat this process. Now, when I repeat this process, these numbers are going to move. So the number 15 is going to move where the number 35 was. And the remainder of five is going to move to where my smaller of the two integers were. And then I repeat this process. So now the 15 will go here, and I will write 15 as five times, in this case, three, and then my remainder would be zero. And like I said, you repeat this process until you get a remainder of zero. And once we do get a remainder of zero, your greatest common divisor is the remainder from the previous step. So we can see here the greatest common divisor between 15 and 35 is five. Essentially what we've done is we have rewritten this as the greatest common divisor between two smaller numbers, 15 and five. And then as we saw, we got an answer of five. Now I do wanna show you how to then write this greatest common divisor as the linear combination of these two numbers. So I'm going to use this step right here and five is equal to, I'm going to subtract this 15 times two over here, and I can see that five would be equal to 35 minus 15 times two. And that's how I can now see that five, the greatest common divisor, is the linear combination of one times 35 plus negative two times 15, and I've written five, as the linear combination of the two integers in the original problem. So now what I wanna do is I wanna walk through an example that uses some larger numbers and is a bit more complicated. All right, so let's go through this process again. Again, you take the largest of the two numbers and you're going to set that equal to 1,769 times some number q and then add your remainder. And in this case, it would be 1,069 only times one and then we would add a remainder of 609. And again, now this number will go in this spot and then this number will go in this spot. So now I have 1,769 is going to equal 609 times two plus a remainder of 551. Again, we continue this process until we get a remainder of zero. So let's go ahead and continue. 609, back up, 609 is going to be 551 times one plus a remainder of 58. All right, let's keep going. 551 is going to be equal to 58 times nine plus a remainder of 29. Moving the 58 over, 58 equals 29 times two plus a remainder of zero. Okay, we arrived at our remainder of zero, so our greatest common divisor is the remainder from the previous step. And again, what essentially we have done is we have been able to write this as the greatest common divisor. We started with those numbers, 
And then we can see that that's the greatest common divisor now of these two numbers. That would be equal to the greatest common divisor of 1,769 and 609, which is equal to the greatest common divisor of 609 and 551, which is equal to the greatest common divisor of 551 and 58. And then finally is equal to the greatest common divisor whoops, of 58 and 29, which we can see is 29. Okay, so now I want to write this greatest common divisor, 29, as a linear combination of these two numbers. Because like I said, sometimes you may be asked that question. So let me go ahead and take this away right here. And let's start with this number, the, the greatest common divisor. So 29, let's start with this step right here. I'm going to subtract this over. So 29 is equal to 551 minus 58 times 9. Again, I don't have it yet as a linear combination of these two numbers. And it looks like I'm missing out on my comma here. Let me put it back. All right. So from here, I want to replace the 58 with what we can see up above. So 58 is equal to, if you subtract this over, 58 is equal to 609 minus 551 times 1. So this would be 29 equals 551 minus, and you can see then 58 is what I talked about. So minus 9 times 58 is equivalent to 609 minus 551 times 1. So now we can combine this together. I can see that this would be 551 minus 9 times a negative 1. So that's going to be plus 9 plus this one. So I have 10 times 551 minus 9 times 609. From here, let's replace 551 with 1,769 minus 609 times 2. Okay, so combining these together, we would have 10 times 1,769 minus so you're going to have a negative 20 of 609 here, and then another negative 9, 609's here. So that will combine to negative 29 times 609. We're getting closer because I see the 1,769 show up, but now I need this other number to show up in my linear combination. So lastly, I'm going to replace 609 with 2,378 minus 1,769 times 1. And I have run out of room, so I'm going to write the final thing, let's say, over here. So I can see that 29 is going to be equal to, let's see, as I distribute this, I'm going to have a negative 29 times a negative 1. So a positive 29 plus a 10 is going to be 39 of 1,769. And then a plus negative 29 times... 2,378. All right, I hope you found that helpful in helping you a little bit with the Euclidean algorithm. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe. Thanks everybody for watching, bye.